Exposure is one of the most important things in photography. It can make the difference between a good photo and a bad one. The three main components that control exposure is ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. This is called the exposure triangle. First up is aperture. Unlike the other two, aperture actually has two functions. It controls the amount of light that is taken in by the camera's sensor which is basically what records the image, and the depth of field, which I'll explain further in another video. What you'll need to know is how aperture works. There are blades inside the camera lens that open and close. This is aperture. You can change the aperture by changing the f-stop value on your camera. A high f-stop means a smaller aperture, which means it lets in less light and a low f-stop means a larger aperture, which means it lets in more light. Next up is the shutter speed, which is a lot easier to understand. It controls how long the shutter stays open. The longer the shutter stays open, the more light the camera sensor gets, but it also results in motion blur. Shooting at a low shutter speed is good for absorbing more light in low light photography, or adding motion blur to photos. But shooting at a low shutter speed will mean that shaky hands will result in blurry photos. So it's highly recommended to use a tripod at low shutter speeds. On the other hand, a high shutter speed does the opposite. It allows for a clear image of an object traveling at higher speeds like a car or an athlete running. Higher shutter speed also results in less light being absorbed by the sensor. Lastly is the ISO. Though it isn't technically a part of exposure, having the proper ISO setting is important. The ISO is a setting that brightens or darkens the photo. As the ISO goes up, so does the brightness of the photo. But this comes at a trade-off. The higher the ISO is, the more grain or noise there is in the photo. Raising the ISO to brighten the photo should be treated as a last resort, and you should play around with the shutter speed and the aperture before touching the ISO. Most modern DSLR cameras have a histogram. A histogram is a tool that shows the distribution of pixel brightness levels in an image. Darker tones are on the left side of the histogram while the brighter tones are on the right. A quote-unquote good histogram will have the tones balanced in the middle of the graph, and the bad one will have the tones on either side of the graph. But there are too many factors besides the histogram that determine what a good photo is. So you shouldn't decide what is good and bad based solely on the histogram. What a histogram should really be used for is to discover whether you clip any shadow or highlight detail. A histogram should be used as a guide to avoid loss of detail, rather than using it to judge your photography. During crime scene investigations, taking photographs with good lighting is just as important as having the proper exposure. With proper lighting, Many of the finer details are seen better, and these details can be extremely crucial to an investigation. Lighting can also be used in dark areas. When investigations have to occur at night or in a covered area, lighting can help with finding evidence and what needs to be photographed. It can also aid in brightening up shaded areas. There are many techniques that you can use to light up the crime scene or show pieces of evidence, such as light painting. With long exposure, which you can achieve by having a low shutter speed, you can move the light source around. This effectively lights up the entire crime scene and illuminates the subject from multiple angles. There is also oblique lighting, 
instead of having the light source directly on the subject, which can cause glare from the surface, the light source instead comes from an angle. This can show detail by creating shadows on the surface. This is extremely helpful when photographing tool marks or footprints. Besides normal lighting, there are also ALS or alternate light sources. These lights can assist investigators to see certain biological fluids and substances that are invisible to the naked eye. Lasers can also be used to photograph the possible path of a bullet by lining it up with the bullet entry and exit marks. Exposure and lighting, as you now have learned, are very crucial to any investigation, and there are many ways to use them. But exposure and lighting are only one part of the photographing process.